whether it's in your hip, knee, or somewhere else, the internet is not exactly crawling with positivity on this specific topic. There's not a lot of hopeful articles and videos out there, but I am very glad that you stumbled upon this video because with this channel, Arthritis Adventure, my main mission is to give you resources and information that is going to help you make informed decisions with your arthritis, but also know the options and know that there is hope, which is super important because arthritis doesn't have a cure but there are things you can do to continue to thrive and adventure despite having arthritis that doesn't always involve surgery. So today in this video, we are gonna go over the top three things that you need to do right now to find pain relief from bone on bone arthritis. Okay, let's go over number one first, movement. Exercise which is usually a dreaded topic, especially if you have bone on bone arthritis. You're like, how in the world am I going to exercise when my knee or my hip or wherever else is throbbing, it's irritated, it's maybe swollen, it's painful? Well, there are some things that you can do for exercise as far as gentle movement goes, because gentle movement can actually be very, very, very effective especially if you notice stiffness and things like that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you three sitting movements, but we live our lives in a standing position. So we have to get used to standing as well. So I'm gonna show you three standing exercises too. These sitting ones are great if you are dealing with higher levels of pain where it really hurts to you know, put your weight on it or it really hurts to stand up for a prolonged period of time. So these I like to use as a warm up into the standing exercises. So I want you to try this routine with me and see how it goes. Okay, so I wanna go over a couple of seated exercises. First, you're just gonna sit towards the edge of a chair Please make sure it's a chair that does not have wheels. Make sure it's a chair that is going to stay put. That's super important. Okay, now first, what I want you to do is you're just gonna alternate, just kicking your leg straight out. Now, no matter where you have arthritis, our entire body needs to move efficiently. And you may be surprised at how like, moving your legs can help your back, and help your core, which can help your shoulders. It's all connected. Our main mission though, with bone on bone arthritis is to make sure it's not flaring up pain. I challenge you to hold it for a second or two, really start to wake up those thigh muscles. Now, you're gonna scoot even just a little bit further out to the edge. If you do have arms on the chair, hang on to the arms. You can also hang on to the actual chair bottom. You're going to straighten one leg out. First, I just want you to try to relax and see if you can get it as straight as you can. Now, what I want you to do is just try to lift it off the ground. Really focus first on squeezing the leg and then lifting it off the ground. I'll show you on this side too. You're going to squeeze your thigh muscles and then see if you can lift it off the ground. As you get better at this, you may be able to lift it a little bit higher. But I want you to really focus on squeezing your thigh muscle here and lifting up. Now we're gonna get our arms and legs involved. So first, what I want you to do is just to start marching, getting your feet moving a little bit faster. Because especially with arthritis, a lot of times we're not exactly moving fast, but some muscles do control that movement. So we have to make sure that we're at least trying. Okay, keep going. Now, what I want you to do is you're gonna reach your arms straight out front, and then you're going to squeeze back. Squeeze those shoulder blades back, but you're still moving those legs. And keep going. If you need to, you can just take it to a slower motion. We're testing some coordination here too. And then repeat. So this doing for working up to say starting with about 15 seconds, see how you feel. If it feels okay, you can go longer. So 
go for about 30 seconds, make it a little bit challenging. A potential goal might be to be able to do this, say, for a minute. We do want to consider standing exercises because we do live our lives for the most part in a standing position. So we're going to turn the chair. So those are the three sitting and now we're going into three standing. The first one being hang on to the chair, step back a little bit so you feel like you're having to reach just a little bit. Okay, now very slight bend in the knees just so they're not locked out. And I want you to reach your hips back and then stand up. Reach your hips back and stand up. So this is not bending at the back. I want you to actually sit your hips back. Like imagine there's a wall or something behind you that you need to touch. You should feel this a little bit of a stretch in the backs of your legs. And stand up. You come down. Hip arthritis, back arthritis, knee arthritis, these are all important joints that benefit from this specific exercise. It shouldn't necessarily feel hard, but it is working the backs of those legs that don't typically get a lot of work throughout the day. And so they may fatigue a little bit quicker. You may notice some tightness in those muscles afterwards, but they break down a little bit and then they repair even stronger, which is one of the things that we are really trying to help get those muscles to do. All right, second one. Stand on the side of the chair, doesn't matter which side because we are doing both. Okay, so I am standing on the left side of the chair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step with the left going sideways. It's hard when you're on the other side and you're hanging on because you do tend to kind of lean over a little bit. So I like to be balanced, standing and then having pressure on the other side. So you do want to try to step as far as you can or try to take a big step. Sometimes if your hip's not allowing that, that's okay. Just start out small and then gradually increase. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side, but when you do the other side, you're going to do it where the chair is in the appropriate position. The last one is backwards. Stand up nice and tall, roll those shoulders back and you're stepping back. And I want you to try to see if you can keep that leg as straight as you can and really focus on the glute as you do this. You may start to realize that you can kind of loosen up your grip or not hang on at all. We want to try to take a big step back, but within reason, I want this to be somewhat comfortable to your joints, so we're not flaring that pain. Three sitting, three standing. Just those simple exercises can start to make a difference. One, physically, just because you're getting blood flowing, we're starting to loosen up those muscles, reduce some of that tightness, some of that stiffness, but two, Simple things can really start to build confidence to say, you know what, hey, I can actually get my heart rate up. I can actually exercise somewhat like I used to, or I can actually move without flaring up my pain. That is a vital step to overcoming bone-on-bone -bone arthritis because if you're constantly in this, there's nothing I can do, everything hurts, you know, going down this path, that leads us both mentally and physically exhausted. I do also have two other videos that can help with bone-on-bone -bone arthritis. They're follow-along workouts that I will put down below if you're looking for more ideas. Number two is about food. Food plays an extremely vital part in bone-on-bone -bone arthritis just because we do a lot of eating every day. We get a lot of repetitions, but then also it can add to the irritation and inflammation inside of our joints because our bones can't feel anything they don't have any nerves but we can get some swelling in the tissues around them that start to facilitate some of that irritation this is why bone on bone arthritis does not typically or does not guarantee pain 
if you have bone on bone arthritis, but you also have a lot of this inflammation and irritation, that then leads to pain. There are a lot of things that contribute to inflammation and food is one of them. I do have a blog post that goes over 15 ways that you can actually reduce inflammation and food's one of them, but there are lots of other things. But food can be a primary one and it can be somewhat of a simple fix if you know what to eat. So there are certain foods that are going to be much more beneficial to control inflammation. And so I really want you to either write down a typical day for you that's food and drink, and then look at that food log. Because sometimes even just simply writing things down or entering it into an app on your phone, like MyFitnessPal, it can be eye-opening just in that. But if you start to look at what you're eating, there are some foods that typically do drive up inflammation. One of the biggest things is foods that are high in vegetable oils and seed oils. So soybean oil, canola oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, these oils can actually be very inflammatory, especially if you're consuming higher quantities in packaged foods and things like that. So please look at the label and see if you notice any of these oils. Now there are other ingredients in foods that can increase inflammation. And I do have a guide of the foods that will keep your arthritic joints happy and those that won't. This guide is very, very inexpensive, but can be very, very helpful in your journey to looking at the foods. Because I meet a lot of people who are like, you know what, I eat healthy, you know, I get the gluten-free organic snacks, and you know, I eat some vegetables and things. But a lot of these snack type foods, a lot of these convenient packaged foods do have some of these oils and other inflammatory ingredients in them soda pop and those sorts of things can really start to add up so no matter how much movement you're doing if you're kind of going against all of your anti-inflammatory efforts with movement to then eating a lot of inflammatory foods you can see where that might be an issue and you might be in this chronic state of irritation so i'd highly recommend getting that guide down below because it is going to be crucial to helping you find pain relief through food. Because it's very, very complex and it's much easier when you're reading through. I also included 30 arthritis friendly snacks that are somewhat packaged, but I have gone through the ingredients, through research and things like that to find some of the best for you. Because let's be real, we can't always eat perfectly. Sometimes we just need something on the go and there are some snacks that you can find that don't have these inflammatory ingredients. Okay, we have movement. We have food. Now, number three is all about consistency. And I know that this may seem like common sense or it may seem simple, but a lot of times when you're trying these things that address movement and address food, they're not tried for long enough. And it can be very easy to give up if you're not particularly seeing results in the first week or two. The good thing about exercise is a lot of times you may notice some immediate effects. Hopefully the good ones, if you're doing the right exercise. Notice some reduced stiffness, some maybe reduced pain, more energy. Some of those do come immediately. But in order to make them long term, meaning they're not just going to go away and will only come, you know, the once a week you do exercise, making it simple with those six exercises, that should take you no longer than 10 minutes or so. If you can commit to 10 minutes at least, at the very least, three times a week, but potentially working up to five or six days a week, depending if you need some recovery time in between, then that is ideal and that's actually going to help make those symptoms like reducing stiffness and increased energy and decreased pain actually last. 
food. We have to be consistent. We can't just be on for you know two to three days of really clean eating and then you have two or three days of kind of reverting back to your old habits. It can be hard when we get busy. It can be hard when we have all these other things happening, but we have to be really consistent in our efforts. It's not saying you have to be totally perfect, but you have to be aware of what you're putting in your body. Now, if you learn all of these, you know, these ingredients that you should watch out for, these ingredients that actually can be helpful, then you start to second guess what you're eating. Like if you were gonna grab those cheese that's off the shelf for a picnic or something. Now you look at those and it's like, oh man, I don't know if I could eat these. And you find another solution. It's being aware of what you're actually putting into your body and what the effects can be that helps lead to consistency when you understand what some of these ingredients may be doing to you. Common snacks too, like skinny popcorn or foods that you think are gluten-free or organic or sugar-free are not always healthy. And actually a lot of times they aren't. So that's why that guide is super important, just so you can see and start thinking about how to be consistent with food. If we can find a movement that doesn't flare up your pain, you can start to be consistent with the foods you're eating and the quality of foods and be consistent at the very minimum, like five days a week, try to get a little bit of movement and really focus on food. Give yourself a little bit of a break because especially starting out, this stuff can be really hard. It can be really hard to resist maybe your favorite ice cream or it can be really hard to resist those cheeses one day, but it's the fact of a majority of the time, at least like 75% of the time, if you're moving and you're eating well, that is going to start your success towards bone on bone arthritis pain relief. Now, these efforts, if you consistently try for about six months, but you still notice your pain is getting worse and you're just not getting to where you want to be, then there's nothing wrong with surgery and it's absolutely needed in sometimes in some places. But what I want you to know in this video is that one, that there are things you can do to prolong it or potentially avoid it completely. And two, that you have other options, that it's not particularly inevitable. Because I meet a lot of people who are under the impression that, hey, I need to get surgery and it's just kind of a matter of when. And that's not particularly the case. It's gonna depend on you and what your pain is actually limiting you from doing and how it's impacting your life. But just by taking a couple simple steps, you may be surprised at the potential you have for pain relief. I hope this was helpful. I'm gonna put all of those links down below. So if you are on your phone and you click right by the title, it'll bring down all kinds of different resources. If you are on your computer, you should see a few, um, a few lines of type already, and then you can just click on that to expand that. I'd love to know if this was helpful for you, if you put a comment down below of what type of arthritis you have and what some things you have tried so far, and maybe how you felt after this video. If you did get some benefit out of this video, I would love it if you would hit that red subscribe button down below because the more subscribers we have, the more people we are able to reach to really bring some light and some hope, especially to topics like bone on bone arthritis. Thank you so much for watching and cheers to adventuring.